must be, he said at other times, I must be about my father's business. Where do you find the son? With the father. Or with the doing the things of the father. You're in the father's business, in the father's house, in his will. In, it's, it's in the will of God you find the presence of the son. And when you want, to, you want the presence of God, get to where the will of God is. Be about his business. Dwell in his court. That's where it is. You can't get, you know, when you're, you know, he could, he could not, he's saying, I'm not lost. I'm in my father's house. You can't be lost. When you're in the will of God, you're not lost. Doesn't matter if you don't know anything else in your life. If you're in the will of God, you're not lost. If you think you've got everything down pat and you're not in the will of God, you're lost. You want the presence of God? Get yourself, your life, your heart into the will of God and you'll find the presence of God in your life. Think about something. Joseph and Mary... They didn't see him, but he still was somewhere. He was blessing somewhere else. The presence of God is always blessing. The, ble the blessing of God, if you don't see the blessing of God, it's still there. It's somewhere. Get into the will of God, and you'll see the blessing of God. Get into the center of his will, and you'll see the blessing of God. Did Joseph and Mary not love Yeshua, Jesus? Of course they did. Even those who love him and love him very much can lose him. They were righteous. They loved God. They were holy. These are the ones who were visited by angels and, and miracles and prophecies coming true in their own life, witnessing the miracles, witnessing the shepherds and the magi, everything. They knew God and came through them, and yet they still lost him. What does that tell you? We can never get smug in the Lord. I don't care what your theology is. This is not theology. This is relationship. You can fall from the love that you have had for God. You can lose the presence. You can become cold in the Lord. The point is it's easy to lose him, even for those who love him. How did they lose him? And this is for all of us. How did they lose him? They lost him, number one, in a festival of feast. It's very easy you can lose God in the good times, in the blessings. It's generally easier to lose, to lose it than in the hard times. Because when, when the good times are, you can get lost in the good times. You can get lost in the blessings of God instead of the God of the blessing. No one wants to get lost in bad times. That generally, generally, most of the time draws us closer. But the good times can become a substitute for God. Things becoming too easy and too comfortable, even the blessings. What else was it? It was Passover, a time filled with the details. So many details, Passover. You got the matzah, you got the, you got, you got the lamb, you got the, all of the wine, you got all the seder, you got the temple, you got the sacrifice. You got all these things happening at once. It's easy, be careful. It's easy to lose the Lord in the details of life. How did they lose him? They were running around. Easy to lose him when you're running around. Mary and Martha. Martha lost him running around. How did they lose him? The festival wasn't their normal thing. You know, in Nazareth, they knew where everything was. They had a routine. They, had a, they knew where all things were. They had everything planned out for them, but not in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a foreign place to them. I mean, it was the holy city, but it was not their home. They didn't have their house. Everything changed. Habits changed. Be careful when things change in your life, when there's an upheaval in your life, when there's changing of routine, changing of a massive thing. It could be a calamity, disaster, or just a big change. Be careful to maintain the Lord in all things. Many, use, many actually lose the Lord in college because of that, because of an anti-Christian culture, and because everything changed for them. How did they lose the Messiah? Perhaps they got a little confident. I mean, it's been 12 years of raising him. It's one thing when you have, you're a new, a new parent and you don't know what you're doing. And, I mean, there's, but after a while, they pretty much have it down. And here they are raising the Messiah. And they have others as well. And they're, 12 years is going pretty well. Be careful when you get confident in the Lord. Be careful when you're confident in yourself, rather. They could be thinking, hey, man, we've done pretty well. We're almost done. In a few years, he'll be... He'll be 18. He'll be old enough to walk on water. He'll take care of himself. Beware of becoming complacent. Self-confidence is the first, it's the easiest way to lead to a fall. We're better to be like new parents, like we don't know what we're doing. Lord, I need you every moment. How do they lose him? 
It says it was their custom to go up to Passover. It was the law. But they were also used to going through these liturgies and pilgrimages and, and things, and they, they thought, okay, it's going to be like everything else. They lost him. You can lose him when you're going through the motions. How many churches have lost the presence of Messiah because they're going through the motions now? When our walk, you see, if you could, not just churches, but in your life, when you, you can end up easily going through the motions of what was once your heart because we're people of habit. So the thing happens once, and that's great. It's everything that means something, but then after a while, you could do it by rote. You gotta be careful by rote. Be careful of going through the motions. Be careful of repeating things that it's not the heart anymore. Sometimes you have to shake it up. Sometimes God has to shake it up. When you do it, it's so easy to replace the outward things, the inner things, for the outward things. You go through the motions. It says, these people, the Lord said to Israel, condemned, convicted them, said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. That's religion. Look at how many churches are, have lost him a long time ago, and all they're doing is going through the motions of what once was. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey 07644, USA. Hope of the World is dedicated to the goal of spreading God's Word and salvation to every land and people. We do this by spreading the Word throughout the world and sponsoring compassion projects to the most poor and needy around the earth. To get in touch or have a part in God's work, just write to Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Or go to hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821.